Tokugawa, Masters of Unifying Japan, and the clan with the most interesting start. Hi, my name is Mr. Smarlonky and today we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of the Tokugawa. As is tradition, we will start with the Tokugawa's clan traits. The Tokugawa are actually masters of intrigue, likely owed to their superior diplomacy skills and clever plotting. The Tokugawa have four traits, of which one is sadly broken, which in turn makes another mostly obsolete. Reduced recruitment costs and upkeep for Kisha Ninja and can recruit superior Kisha Ninja supposedly make your Kisha Ninja superior and cheaper than those of other clans. Sadly, the Tokugawa Kisho Ninja suffer from the same bug as the Atori Kisho Ninja. Rather than being a superior unit, their stats are exactly the same as regular Kisho Ninja, except ammunition, which is far lower for the Tokugawa and the Hattori Kisho Ninja. This in turn makes the reduced recruitment costs and upkeep trade rather pointless, as you'll unlikely want to actually recruit any Kisho Ninja. Their remaining traits are less pointless, but still pretty meh. Bonus to diplomatic relations gives a flat plus 5 bonus, which isn't really enough to prevent any wars. Lastly, plus 2% to the success chance of Metsuke actions does what it says on the tin, which once again really isn't a whole lot. When it comes to the traits, the Tokugawa definitely got the short end of the stick. On the campaign map, things aren't looking that much better. The Tokugawa start in Mikawa, a fairly average town made valuable by its warhorse trade resource. It has average soil and a port, with a market already built. You also start with a Metsuke already out in the field. The Tokugawa's hard initial difficulty isn't for lack of a good town, it's your neighbours. Specifically your eastern neighbour, the Ibagawa. At first glance you might think, neat, an ally to our east, keeping our backs safe while we expand westwards. Sadly upon closer inspection you'll find this isn't the case. Rather than being their ally, you are the Imagawa's vassal, which leaves you at a very vulnerable and difficult position, but we'll return to that topic momentarily. The Imagawa own two provinces, Totomi and Suruga. Totomi is a fairly unremarkable province, but Suruga is valuable because of its school, which will allow you to recruit higher level Metsukes. To your west in Awari are the Oda. Awari is a very valuable province with very fertile soil, as well as a port and will likely be one of your richest towns throughout the campaign. Lastly, you also boarded the Saito just to the north in Mino, a mostly insignificant town but an easy target in the early game. This is where your early difficulty comes from, however. Let's go back to the topic at hand, your being a vassal to the Megawa. Forget all the minor downsides of being a vassal. The only thing that really matters is that you are unable to declare war on who you want. This means that once you've taken out the Oda, you cannot expand unless you get declared war on by someone else. Unless you take action and break the vassalage yourself, take a hit to your daimyo's honor and diplomatic relations, or find a way to make the Imagawa break it themselves, you might find yourself stuck with nothing to do after just a few turns. Luckily, you are not without options. Taking a hit to your daimyo's honor is definitely the worst option, but it's better than sitting around doing nothing in the hopes of having the Imagawa die. They start allied to the Takeda and friendly with the Hojo, so the chance of them falling to an eastern threat is incredibly small. Your other option is to make the Imagawa attack you. There's no surefire way of doing this, but there are several things you can try which will usually result in their attack. You start the campaign trading with the Imagawa. Breaking the trade agreement will make them dislike you. You can build a sake den in one of your towns, recruit a ninja and start sabotaging their buildings and armies. Every time you fill, they would dislike you further. Lastly, my favorite tactic is to take my army and park it in the forest just outside of their territory. As long as they don't discover your army, they will automatically think you are an easy prey because you have no units defending your capital and they will likely attack you. Using all these tips in unison will almost guarantee their attack. Lastly, let's take a step back and talk about how to deal with the Oda. The Oda start with a small force in your lands, as well as a force near Owari. You can easily just take out their first force in your territory, retreat into your castle and wait for the second force to attack your town. A more exciting path to take, however, is to bribe their initial force and put your army in the forest on the border of Terra region. Their remaining force will likely start heading for your town, and if you manage to take Owari while their force is in your province, they will magically disappear off the face of the earth. This all relies on your bribe actually succeeding though, so it's a more risky but interesting tactic. A side note is that on easier difficulties you can afford to bribe with your starting treasury, but that's impossible on higher difficulties, meaning you'll have to use cheap tactics like selling military access to the Imagawa to obtain the final few hundred koku needed for the bribe. Finally a quick look at the Tokugawa family tree. Your daimyo is the 19 year old Tokugawa Hirotada, who has two solid traits. Suspicious gives him plus one repression to the province in which he is present, and also reduces his chance of being assassinated by 5%. Brave gives all units under his command plus one morale. Hiwatara has one son, the legendary Iyasu, who sadly is only two at the start of the campaign. Your second general is an unrelated 31 year old. On to the Tokugawa specific units, which are pretty bare bones. There's a whopping two units, and like I mentioned before, one of them is worse than the vanilla counterpart. For completion's sake though, let's talk about them anyway. I already mentioned the most important things about the Tokugawa Kisho Ninjas. In essence, they are a purely worse unit than their vanilla counterpart, whilst being slightly cheaper. There are some ways to fix this though. 
for example, mods. The mod I'd recommend for fixing this and many other similar things is the Extended Clan Unit Bonuses mod. Along with many other things, it will increase the power of the Tokugawa's Kishou Ninja to be stronger than Vanilla Kishou Ninja, but weaker than Hattori Kishou Ninja, as it should be. If you're interested in the mod, I've placed a link in the description to its mod page on Steam. Moving on to the Tokugawa Unique Unit, the Tokugawa Mounted Gunners, which can be seen as somewhat of a mix between Otomo Dunderbuss Calf and Bow Calf. Their range is in between the two, and while they might not have the pure power of Dunderbuss Calf, they will do a hell of a lot more damage than Bow Calf. They're incredibly useful for skirmishing away melee infantry, as you can lose a volley, take a few steps back, lose a volley, rinse and repeat. Their only real downside is the gunsmith requirement, which is often too much of an investment for me. Finally, I shall recommend some armies. As the Tokugawa don't really have any specialization in units, you can really do whatever you want to do. You do start with a pastures building in your capital, so building a stables there early on will give you some nasty light calf to play around with and I would recommend fielding a bunch of those early on. Later in the game if you decide to put the Tokugawa mounted gunners to use, you want to use a somewhat defensive army to give your mounted gunners time to do their skirmishing. Field some Naginata Samurai to tank arrows, back them up with some bow warrior monks and put your mounted gunners to use while your archers pick apart theirs and you'll have a grand old time. That is going to do it for the Tokugawa clan overview. Good luck with your unification of Japan. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. If you like these types of videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also make sure to join my Discord channel if you just want to hang out and chat. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.